ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله تعالى فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارham ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله تعالى وخير الهدى هدى محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدع وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار وما قل وكفى خير مما كثر والها وانما توعدون لات وما انتم بمعجزين قال رب السجن احب الي مما يدعونني الي والا تصرف عني كيدهن اصب اليهن واكن من الجاهلين There's a great verse in the Quran that echoes a very profound statement uttered by a man who was about to enter prison and he was innocent This is the story of the Prophet Yusuf alayhi salam. He said some amazing words when he was facing a situation. Now this is the only time a prison sijin is mentioned in the Quran. And this prison happened to be in Egypt. And the prisoner happened to be innocent. And everyone knew he was innocent. And the one who put him in jail, he knew he was innocent. But yet the circumstances were such they still had to put him in jail. Wa badalahum ba'da ma ra'u al-ayat la yasjununahu hatta hin. They knew all the signs were there there he did nothing wrong. But yet they still decreed that he would go into prison for some time and he spent some years in prison. This week this verse has been echoing in the minds and hearts of Muslims around the world. because this week was a reminder of the past this week we saw some unfortunate circumstances some incidents in the muslim world that pains many people's hearts but it reminds us of the past we saw stories of great courage and determination we saw stories of great perseverance and sacrifice there are those among us who will sell themselves for a paltry price as yusuf alayhi salam was sharawu bi thamanin baqsin darahim ma'duda he was a great man immense beauty he had wisdom he was a great prophet of allah but yet when he was found in the well and people found him they had no idea who he was no estimation of his status so they sold him allah says for a paltry price a mees a, a meager sum darahim ma'duda just a few darahim or a few dollars you can say today there are people today that will sell their principles for a measly price but then we still have individuals that will stick to their principles until their death and this week we saw the death of the only popularly elected president of the republic of egypt dr muhammad mursi rahimahullah ta'ala it's a great tragedy he died in prison and he stuck to his principles until the end our khutbah today we want to reflect on the verse of the quran let's go back to the story of yusuf because there are parallels thousands of years pass but the human predicament remains the same we still have this is the same struggle 
that continues, the struggle between haq and batil, the struggle between justice and injustice, the struggle between Islam and all the forces that are opposed to Islam. It's just different shapes, different manifestations. We have to make a choice what side of the struggle we're on. Allah says, الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا يُقَاتِلُونَ فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ وَالَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا يُقَاتِلُونَ فِي سَبِيلِ الطَّاغُوتِ Allah says those who believe, their struggle, what side are they on? They fight in the way of Allah. And those who disbelieve, they fight in the way of other powers, ta'bud. And then Allah reminds, فَقَاتِلُوا أَوْلِيَاءَ الشَّيْطَانِ إِنَّ كَيْدَ الشَّيْطَانِ كَانَ ضَعِيفًا So fight on the right side. Fight against the friends of shaitan because his plot is very weak. So let us reflect over the statements of the Prophet Yusuf alayhi salam. The Prophets of Allah, they were such amazing individuals. They said things that were so profound, so comprehensive, that Allah quotes them again and again on various pages of His book for us to recite until the end of time. Let's take a moment and reflect about Yusuf's situation when he was facing imprisonment. He did nothing wrong. He was being seduced by some of the people of power in Egypt at that time. And he being a prophet of Allah, a man of taqwa, a man of principles, he said no. He did not want to take part in anything that was wrong. So he had to make a choice. The choice he was given was a choice of prison. So he said all those, at that time, wonderful words. These are words that summarize what it is for a believer to persevere in the face of adversity. قَالَ رَبِّ السِّجْنُ وَحَبُّ إِلَيَّ مِمَّا يَدْعُونَنِي إِلَيْهِ he said, at this point, my Lord, jail, prison is more beloved to me than what they are calling me to. These were the people of power. They wanted to seduce him, Imra'at al-Aziz. And this was something that involved ma'asiyah, disobedience of Allah Azza wa Jal. So it was Yusuf, he chose. He chose prison while being obedient to Allah over the comforts of this worldly life. Imagine the choice any one of us would have had at, at, a, at a situation like this. You accept the, choice, the, the oppressor, you accept, accept the rulers, what do you get? You get a comfortable life. He probably would have been given the keys of the kingdom at that moment. You get comfort, you get luxury. But it involved disobeying Allah Azza wa Jal. So Yusuf, he made a difficult choice. It's not a difficult choice for believers. Believers know what their choice is. He chose adversity in the path of obedience of Allah over the comfort of this life in you know, a disobedience of Allah this is the choice every believer faces every believer shaitan will come to us the forces that are against the awliya Allah will come to us and give us choices they will give us money they will give us comfortable life all you have to do is do this this or that but believer they have to choose you want to have adversity in the path of obedience or do you want to have worldly luxuries in the path of disobedience? For the Prophet, the choice was clear. So, if, so Yusuf السلام, he was a man of taqwa. So he chose sabr. He chose to be patient in the path of adversity. So the lesson we learn from his life, his whole beautiful story, is that when you choose adversity, when you choose hardship in the path of Allah, over the comfort of this life, then you get respect in this life and in the next life. But when you choose the other side, you choose money, you choose material wealth, you choose to compromise your principles, you get temporary luxury, but you get nothing but humiliation at the end. So today everyone knows Yusuf, the end of his story. He was given the keys of the kingdom of Egypt. He got everything that you can imagine, but through the right way. He, was, he spent years in prison because he was innocent. He did not compromise. They asked him, he had a choice to get out at any point by compromising his principles. He refused. What was the end result? He had respect. And then he had the keys of the kingdom of Egypt. And today everyone remembers his name. We don't remember the name of the woman who seduced him. All we know, Imra'at al-Aziz. We don't even know the poor woman's name. What kind of respect is that? So believers, this is the choice we all have. You, want, you have to choose adversity and be patient in the path of Allah 
over the comforts of this life. If you do that, Allah will bless you with a good life. And Allah will bless you with a good next life. If you don't do that, you might think you have something in this life. But it's nothing but humiliation. Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah, rahimahullah ta'ala, he understood this verse in a profound way. And the reason he understood this verse, this verse is about prison. And he himself spent most of his life in prison for nothing that he did, but only opinions that he had for speaking the truth. His life is a life of a man who had taqwa and who had tawakkul in Allah Azza wa Jal. And because of that, he spent most of his life in prison and his life is amazing. He's, he produced so many books, so much material that today every khatib all around the world quotes him and quotes his interpretation, his tafasid, his insights. And all these while he is in prison. So he said about this verse that Ibrahim, uh, Yusuf alayhi salam, he had two qualities. And in this verse, first he had sabr in the path of Allah. And the second, he had the quality of isti'ana. What is isti'ana? Isti'ana means you turn to Allah azza wa jal for all your needs. So in this verse, Rabbi sijnu ahabu ilayya mimma yadrunani ilayya. If Yusuf, he had patience. He chose the path of prison to be patient in adversity while obeying Allah. And secondly, he said, He said, O oh Allah, if you don't take this plot away from me, this conspiracy away from me, then I would fall into it and I would, be become, I would become among those who are ignorant, the jahileen. So Yusuf, not only was he patient in his path, but he called upon Allah Azza wa Jal to help him in his circumstances. So these are the two qualities every believer who's faced with persecution needs. You need sabr and you need isti'ana. These are the ingredients for success, for respect in this life and the next. Sabr and isti'ana. Rabbi sijnu ahabu ilayya mimma yadrunani ilay sabr. And wa illa tasrif anni kaydahunna. This is isti'ana. This is the same lesson that the Prophet Musa alayhi salam, we're talking about the, the statements of the Prophets, the amazing statements of the Prophets, the Anbiya. So the statement of Yusuf deserves to be framed. But if you fast forward a few hundred years later, from the progeny of the same Prophet, there was another great Prophet Allah chose, and he rose up in the same land, and he talked to his people and he gave them some amazing advice. He gave them an amazing address. He said, what did he tell them? The exact same thing. What was he facing? He was facing a people, his, the believers at that time. Now the situation had turned. They were enslaved. They were second class citizens. They were not respected in the land. It's kind of slavery. It's kind of like an imprisonment in their own land. So he told them two things. He said, Ya qawm, ista'inu billah, ista'ana. Wasbiru and sabr, the same lesson that his forefather Yusuf alayhi salam had said at the time he faced imprisonment in the same land. Why? Because Musa knew the only way out for his people, the only way out for any believer who's faced with persecution, faced with hardship and turmoil, is these two qualities, a sabr and isti'ana. If you look at the qualities, if you look at the context of Musa's speech, we can learn a lot. What was happening at that time? He was facing Fir'aun. Many of us, we look at the story of Musa, and it's a mistake to frame this as a story of Musa versus Fir'aun, an individual versus an individual. It was nothing like that. It's a mistake to frame any struggle for justice as a struggle of individuals. But there are always people around the individuals. Fir'aun had many people around him, and they were equally complicit in the injustice. It wasn't just one person handing down these orders. But he had Haman, he had Harun, he had all his ministers. And the same thing with Musa salam, he had Harun. And he had all the believers at that time that supported them. So it's never, the struggle is never about individual. If you look at this verse in detail, it's amazing what, did, what was happening before Musa said these words to his people. Fir'aun and his people had a discussion. Before Allah shared the story, the, the, the speech of Musa to his people, he shared the speech and the communication of Fir'aun with his minister. What does he say? The mala, the leaders, the ministers of Fir'aun, they said to Fir'aun. 
So now Fir'aun is not the one speaking. It's the minister speaking to Fir'aun. So people think Fir'aun was a tyrant. He was a tyrant, but everything he came from his mind. And he gave orders. But it was his people that also pushed him in that direction. Allah says, وَقَالَ الْمَلَأُ مِنْ قَوْمِ فِرْعَوْنِ أَتَّذَرُ مُوسَى وَقَوْمَهُ لِيُفْسِدُوا فِي الْأَرْضِ وَيَذَرَكَ وَآلِهَتَكَ The minister of Fir'aun, they advised him, they said, look, are you going to leave Musa and his people alone to spread corruption in the earth? They convinced Fir'aun that Musa and his people were corrupt and they were spreading corruption in the earth. And then they convinced him that he is the one who calls people to leave the gods of Fir'aun. He's going to call people to leave you and your gods. So this is the struggle of Musa in the time of Fir'aun. But you can see Fir'aun had people complicit in the injustice. And they were equally complicit. So it's not just one individual, but there's a system around the individual that creates circumstances that puts believers in the turmoil and the strife that they, they are put in. So then Musa, at that moment, when Fir'aun convinced, when the ministers of Fir'aun convinced him, what did Fir'aun say? So Fir'aun, he said, He said, I will kill, so after they convinced him of this, he said, I will kill all their males, and I will spare their females, and I will be dominant over them. So Fir'aun then he continued with his policies of oppression and injustice against the believers in the land of Egypt. And then Musa, he stood up, he reminded his people, his people were very weak. They were very scared. They looked at these circumstances, impossible odds. So he gave them inspiration, he gave them hope. So he gave them wonderful pieces of advice. It's the exact same thing that Yusuf was saying. So he said to them, Qala Musa liqawmihi, إِسْتَعِينُوا بِاللَّهِ وَاصْبِرُوا إِنَّ الْأَرْضَ لِلَّهِ يُورِثُهَا مَنْ يَشَاءُ مِنْ عِبَادِي وَالْعَاقِبَةُ لِلْمُتَّقِينَ He said, look, have, turn to Allah. Ask Allah to help you. He's the only one who can change your circumstances. Trust in Him and ask Him to help you and be patient in adversity that's going to come to you. And then he remind, look, remember that all the lands in the world belong to Allah. He gives his kingdoms to whom he wills temporarily. So you have this minister here, that minister there, then you have this prime minister, this president, then you have this nation state, then you have this empire, then that empire. All these are temporary. They come by the permission of Allah. But ultimately the lands belong to Allah. Inna al-arda lillahi yurithuha man yashahu min ibadi. And he decrees who inherits these lands. So believers need to remember, Musa was reminding his people, look, don't think of this as Fir'aun's land. It belongs to Allah. This is the situation you're in. The way out is ta'inu billahi wasbiru. And then Musa reminded his people at the end, وَالْعَاقِبَةُ لِلْمُتَّقِينَ The future belongs the people, to the people of taqwa. The, peop, the future belongs to the muttaqin. Reminding the believers, look, your situation is impossible. If you look at, if you describe what's going on at that time, it is impossible. No one in their right mind would say, you know, this is the time you can stand up to Fir'aun. Someone with so much power, so many numbers. You're already weak. They spit upon you. They don't even look at you as equal citizens. They don't even look at you as human beings. But this is a time to stand up. This is a time to remember that the future always belongs to the people of Taqwa. Taqwa is those who fear Allah, those who do the right thing, those who obey Allah and avoid His disobedience. This is a lesson for all believers. This is the lesson Yusuf reminded his people. This is the lesson that Musa salam reminded his people. And this is the lesson we all need to remind ourselves in situations we find ourselves in all around the world at every time, especially our times today. Muslims are struggling. There are genocides happening against Muslim people all around the world. Those who stand for Allah, they're being ridiculed, they're being imprisoned, they're being in jail. This is the time to stand up and remember, look, these are temporary circumstances. Never despair from the mercy of Allah. And always remember, وَالْعَاقِبَةُ لِلْمُتَّقِينَ The future always belongs to the people of taqwa. Barakallahu lana wa lakum fil Qur'an al-Azim.
ونفعنا وإياكم بما فيه من الذكر والآيات الحكيم أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين فاستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الحمد لله رب العالمين الصلاة والسلام على رسوله الكريم وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين أما بعد Today we're reflecting over the statement of Yusuf alayhi salam when he said قال رب السجن أحب إلي مما يدعونني إلي وإلا تصرف عني كيدهن أصب إليهن وأكم من الجاهلين Yusuf he said Prison is more beloved to me than what they are inviting me to. And oh Allah, if you don't get involved and change my circumstance and avert these trials from me, then I will fall and become among the jahileen. So here we said Yusuf had two qualities as Shaykh al ibn Taymiyyah said. First quality is the quality of sabr. And sabr is many things, but here it means to be patient with adversity, with difficulty in the path of Allah. And the second quality is the quality of isti'ana. Isti'ana is when you ask Allah and no one else, you realize no one in the world has the power to help you. No one has the resources that can change your condition. It's only Allah. That's why we say, إِيَّاكَ نَعْبُدُ وَإِيَّاكَ نَسْتَعِيمُ Every day in Surah Al-Fatiha we say, Oh Allah, You alone we worship. And you alone, from you alone, we turn to for help. Isti'ana. Ibn Taymiyyah, he goes on, he said, in fact, Yusuf's psychology at this time, with this verse, is a little deeper than that. It's not just sabr and isti'ana. If you analyze what was going through his mind, he analyzed his wonderful life. First of all, he started with taqwa. He was a man of taqwa. So in this situation where he found himself, where he's being seduced by the minister's wife, and he's a source of fitna, and he's facing imprisonment. Four qualities, there are four things that are part of his psychology. Number one, he had taqwa. Taqwa means he feared Allah. He did not want to take part in any of this disobedience because of that taqwa. So the first step of, Ibra, of Yusuf salam was to stop what they were doing and to reject them, that's taqwa. Then the second step, after he did, he did that, they, they, they gave him a choice of prison or accepting what they wanted to do. At that moment, he chose sabr. Rabbi sijni sijnu ahabu ilayya. So first he started with taqwa. Then he chose sabr. And this is the step that Muslims don't realize you have to take this journey if you want to be believers. If you want to be steadfast in the path of Allah. So many of us, yes, we try to obey Allah and we try to avoid disobedience, but we fall. But when things get tough in front of us, we never go to that second step of sabr. We give up easily. So there are Muslims all around the world, they're facing impossible choices. When they're faced with imprisonment, or they're faced with something like that, then they give up. They take that first step, they start with some level of taqwa but they don't take that second step of having sabr. Once you have taqwa, that's it. Then you don't care about the rest of the world. Then you have, you're, you're, you're willing to bear all the difficulties that taqwa will bring you. That's the second step. So taqwa and then sabr. And then the third step was Yusuf after he made that choice and he's facing imprisonment and he goes into prison, you realize Allah is the only one that can, that can help you with these circumstances. So Yusuf, at that point, he said, وَإِلَّا تَصْرِفْ عَنِّي كَيْدَهُنَّ He turned to Allah. And he said, Oh Allah, I have taqwa. I accepted this imprisonment for the sake of your obedience. But even now, you're the only one that can help me. So that's isti'ana. Make sure you turn to Allah. And don't turn to any other human being. No other human being has the power to change your fortunes or to change your circumstances. And then in the end, the fourth step in the, in the journey of Yusuf salam, he had total tawakkul. Tawakkul. Tawakkul means you know, you realize that really it's Allah controlling all the affairs. Allah has the keys of the prison. 
Allah has the hearts of the people putting you in prison. Allah controls everything that exists in the world. If you realize that, then you will never compromise. So, it, so Yusuf السلام, he stuck to that to the end. And even they would come to him and he refused to come out. And even when he was faced, then Allah, what happened? Allah made, you know, Allah could have arranged an escape or the prison to come falling down and Yusuf escaped. But Allah works through his plans. He planted a dream in the king of that time. And then the dream no one could understand. And then eventually the dream reached Yusuf and he gave the right interpretation. Then Allah changed the heart of the king to release Yusuf. And even then Yusuf said, no, go ask what happened to prove my innocence. And only when that was proven, he was let out of jail. And eventually we know the story. He had the keys of the kingdom of Egypt at that time. How did he get the keys of the kingdom of Egypt? Four things. He had taqwa. He had sabr in the path of Allah. He had isti'ana and he had total tawakkul. If you miss any of these ingredients, you will fall. So Muslims today, this is the lesson we need to remind ourselves. Things are difficult. Things are hard in America. Things are hard all around the world. Muslims are being persecuted in India. Muslims are being persecuted in Burma. They're a minority. They're being killed. They're being destroyed. They're being... In, look what's happening in Syria, in Palestine. There's no izzah. There's no respect for Muslims. But the way out is the way of the Anbiya. We have to have taqwa. Make sure you obey Allah Azza wa Jal. Never compromise your principle. And be ready to accept adversity and trials in its path. Sabah. And always turn to Allah, don't turn to any other powers in the world. Because He's the only one that can help you. And have tawakkul, Have total reliance and trust in Allah Azza wa Jal. He's the one who can change our circumstances. This is the same struggle. This is the same path. This is the same formula that comes in the Quran and the story of all the Prophets. This is the same struggle that our Prophet ﷺ went through. Even he, perhaps he didn't face jail, but Ibn Taymiyyah said he faced a fate worse than jail. He spent a number of years with the believers in Sharq, Bani Hashim, in that valley. They were boycotted, they were exiled. That was kind of like an imprisonment. They couldn't trade, they had no food, they were tying rocks to their stomach. It was an imprisonment, not only that, Yusuf, he was in prison, but they left him alone. So he was doing his thing. But, but the Prophet and the believers, Ibn Taymiyyah said this was worse. Because not only were they imprisoned in this valley for a long time, but there, were also, there was a relentless propaganda campaign against him. People were spreading lies against him, calling him a sorcerer, a liar, this and that. But he persevered, he reminded the believers to have taqwa. And I'll share with you, the final thing I'll share with you, some words from the Prophet wasallam, Our Prophet. He was also a descendant of these Prophets. He also thought in the same way. He was also made from the same material. He had the same thinking and he taught the same lessons. So I'll share with you from the Battle of Badr. There are so many lessons in life, just the Battle of Badr. You can imagine, just understand what was going on in the Battle of Badr. This is when the Muslims persecuted 13 years, struggling. Many of them did not survive. Finally, they have a land of their own. They're building their new life. There's nothing but hope. There's aspirations of all these believers. And now, within a few months, they're attacked by the same enemies that kicked them out of Mecca. And when they were attacked, the Muslims came out to defend themselves. They were ready for a battle. They didn't come out of Medina expecting the battle of Badr. They came out of Medina just to see the situation, but it turned into a full-scale battle. And how many of you know the numbers? A thousand fully armed people, uh, soldiers from their enemy, the Quraysh. And all they had, 313. Many of them had no weapons. Most of them had no horses. They were ill-equipped. They were outnumbered, 313 versus a thousand. This is a critical situation. In this time, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, what, what, the, what was the advice that he gave them? So Allah shares this advice on this fateful day. He says, وَلَقَدْ نَصَرَكُمُ اللَّهُ بِبَذْرٍ وَأَنْتُمْ أَذِلَّةٍ Allah is the one you, who helped you on the battle of Badr when you were subjugated. You had no numbers. You had no equipment. فَاتَّقُوا اللَّهَ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَشْكُرُونَ Fear Allah so that you may be grateful. إِذْ تَقُولُ لِلْمُؤْمِنِينَ Now Allah is quoting the Prophet Muhammad when you said to the believer, 
So we shared with you the quote from Yusuf alayhi salam. Then we shared with you the, the advice and the speech of Musa alayhi salam. And now let's hear the advice and the speech of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They're all saying the same thing in their own words. So he said, if taku, Allah said, if taqulu lil mu'minina, alay yakfiyakum an yumiddakum rabbukum bi thalathati alafi min al-malaikati munzili, musawimin. He says, is it not enough for you that Allah will give you His soldiers, there is invisible soldier, that number in 3,000. That's enough for you. Don't worry about your 300. But there is help coming from you, from unknown quarters. And then he said, Bala, in tasbiru wa tattaku. If you have sabr and you have taqwa, same two ingredients. Sabr and taqwa. Taqwa, fearing Allah, and then being ready to face the hardships, that's sabr. If you fear Allah, you're not ready to face the hardship, you're ready to run. At the first hardship, you're not going to succeed. So the Prophet was reminding the believers, Bala, in tasbiru wa tattaku, wa ya'tukum min fawrihim hadha. If you have sabr and taqwa, even if these 1,000 well-equipped soldiers rush at you, running at you, yumdidukum rabbukum bi khamsati alafi min al-malaikati musawwibim. Allah will help you. He will send down 5,000 armed, invisible soldiers to help you. Why? Because you have sabr and you have taqwa. وَمَا جَعْلَهُ اللَّهُ إِلَّا بُشْرَى لَكُمْ وَلِتَطْمَ إِنَّ قُلُوبَكُمْ وَمَنْ نَصْرُ إِلَّا مِنْ عِنْدِ اللَّهِ الْعَزِيزِ الْحَكِيمِ And finally he said, help only comes from Allah. Help only comes from Allah, not from resources, not from weapons, not from equipment, not from numbers. وَمَنْ نَصْرُ إِلَّا مِنْ عِنْدِ اللَّهِ الْعَزِيزِ الْحَكِيمِ Help can only come from Allah Azza wa Jal, who is Al-Aziz, who is Al-Hakim. So this is the lesson, my brothers and sisters, all of us need to remind ourselves. Difficult times like this, we all need to have taqwa. We all need to have sabr, be ready to face difficulty. And have tawakkul, rely on Allah Azza wa Jal. And turn to Him, call upon Him, make dua, isti'ana. This is the only way out for the Muslims today. This was the only way out for the Muslims of the past. May Allah accept all of us, all the deeds that we do. May Allah bless all the Muslims around the world. May Allah ease our circumstances. May Allah ease the circumstances of the Muslims of Syria, the Muslims of Palestine, the Muslims in India, the Muslims in Burma, the Muslims in China, the Muslims in Egypt, the Muslims all around the world who are facing persecution only because they want to stand up for you, Ya Allah. Allahumma arina al-haqqa haqqa wa razuqna tiba'a wa arina al-baatila baatila wa razuqna ishtinaba Allahumma tawaffana muslimin wa alhikna bil-salihin ghayra khazaya wa la maftunin Allahumma aslih lana deenana alladhi huwa ismatu amrina wa aslih lana dunyana alladhi fiha ma'ashuna wa aslih lana akhiratana alladhi ilayha ma'aduna واجعل الحياة زيادة لنا من كل خير والموت راحة لنا من كل شر اللهم اكفنا بحلالك عن حرامك وأغننا بفضلك عمن سواك اللهم آمين وآخر دعوانا أن الحمد لله رب العالمين